Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at Westminster and to our inclusive family of faith. We especially welcome our visitors and those joining us on YouTube. Please sign the friendship pad and pass it down the row so we can greet each other by name. Thank you to everyone who came out to Portillo's and who donated to North Texas Giving Day for New Day. They raised over $26,000 to feed hungry students, which is over 6,500 meals. Thanks again for making a difference for hungry kids right here in Arlington. Yes, that's a big round of applause for that. That's a big deal. That's a lot of food. Um, Our next shelter sandwiches will be taking place this Saturday, September 28th at 10 a.m. We still need a few ingredients, so please sign up on the board in the hall to support our efforts for Arlington Life Shelter. And then save the date now. Our all-church workday is coming up on October 5th from 8 a.m. to noon. Bring your tools and your gloves to help spruce up our building and grounds. If you have special skills or questions, please see Carol Rayburn or Zeb Wright, our property elders. They will find something for you to do, I promise. <laughs> um, I'll also mention that the Friends and Foundation of the Arlington Public Library, they're doing their fall book sale, um, and that'll be at First United Methodist Church in Arlington, um, and that'll be this coming week from Tuesday to Friday. There are flyers, if you're interested for that, on the table outside the sanctuary. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. Day by day, God leads us to the deep, deep pools of peace, to the green, lush lawns of grace. Day by day, Jesus calls us to pour out ourselves in service, to anoint the stranger with hope. Day by day, the Holy Spirit shows us the community we could be, the family we are called to become. Let us worship our risen Lord. Please stand as you're able to join us singing our opening hymn number 223.
day by day, God would lead us to the places of hope and healing, while moment by moment we continue to follow sin down all the wrong paths. Let us confess our lives as we draw near to the one who would restore us to wholeness. Join me as we pray together, saying, The wrong paths to foolish lives and repeated mistakes, we know all too well where they are, gate of our lives. Stirring up the waters with trouble comes all too easy to us, we confess. And locking the doors of our hearts so we don't have to love others is second nature to us. Forgive us our goodness and mercy. May our hearts overflow with hope for others as you anoint us with healing oil. May we share from our abundance with all who hunger for life. May we follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to the places of service and life with you forever. Amen. Friends, God gathers us here to find this goodness and mercy. God brings us together to remind us that we are one body. That in these waters, we are named and claimed as beloved children of God, and nothing can ever change that. Join me in our assurance of pardon. Seeing our brokenness, God puts us back together. Knowing our hunger for hope, God feeds us with Christ. Hearing our prayers, God chooses to forgive us. One hope, one faith, one baptism, one body. These are the gifts God gives to us in this moment and all the moments to come. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Alleluia! Amen. Amen. Knowing that we have been forgiven, let us forgive one another as we share the peace of Christ. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You may be seated. I invite all our kids to come up with Miss Brooklyn. <laughs> Hi, Nova. You and Dad want to come sit with us? Yeah, tell Dad. Come sit. Hi. Hi. Wow. Who needs? Hi, birds. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Miss Brooklyn. Hi. How, how are you? Are you good? You look like you're dressed for a soccer game. After church, yeah. Hey, so last week we had a lot of fun in children's time. Do you remember? Did we have a lot of fun? Well, we talked about good words, and then we had words that maybe didn't make us feel so good, and we all got a good laughter out of it, right? Right, we had good words and words that didn't make us feel so good. Well, today, we are going to talk more about words. Do you like that? Words? Yeah? Okay, so do you always listen to what is told to you, Connor? No. No. <laughs> Reed Richardson? What? There's his answer. Do you always? No. Okay, today we're going to do something. I want to know how well you listen to words. Are you ready? Can you stand up? Can you spread out with me? I'm going to stand with Cohen. Cohen, stand up with me. Okay, 
Spread out. Okay. Everybody spread out? Okay. Have you heard of Mother May I? Okay. We are not playing Mother May I. We are playing Miss Brooklyn May I. Oh, no, actually, I want to play Miss Brooklyn Says instead of Simon Says. Let's play Miss Brooklyn Says. Is that okay? Let's change that. Okay. Okay. Miss um, Brooklyn Says jump up and down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Miss Brooklyn Says spin in a circle. Okay. Pat your head. Oh, that's good listening. Miss Brooklyn Says stop. Miss mm. Brooklyn Says shake your body. Miss mm -hmm. Brooklyn says stop. Rub your tummy. Oh. oh. Okay. Miss Brooklyn says hug a neighbor. Mm. Okay. Okay. You guys did really well. Oh. Okay. Well, I have a question. Okay. Come sit back with me. That was, you guys were, okay. Miss Brooklyn says stop hugging. So here's my question. You guys did a really go good job listening. Cohen, you did a good job jumping. Nova, you did a good job hugging. You guys were really good listening to my words. Do you think you always listen to God's words the same way? Oh, oh, you don't? Huh. Oh, Colleen does, yes. What do you think, why do you think you don't always listen to God's words the same way you just listen to mine? We sin. Okay. We're human. Okay, I mean, those are two basic answers. We <laughs> sin and we're human. You're right. Do you think we always pay attention to God's yeah. words? What happens when you're so busy that you are studying for high school test, you're practicing for percussion, you're doing dance, you are trying to do all the school activities, you're doing your homework. No, but you're so busy just trying to figure out when you're going to get your next cookie. Do we always take time to hear his word? No, it's kind of hard to respond if you don't hear it. So here's my job this week for you. Will you take time and will you try to listen to his voice and his word? Because then you could respond a whole lot better. Here's what that could look like. Can I give you a real life example? Because I like real life examples. Okay, sometimes God speaks to us in funny ways. Colleen, you could see somebody this week on the playground all by themselves with nobody to play with, and they just look sad. That may be God asking you, would you go be their friend? Could you respond to his word? How will you respond? You say yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay, so here's what it could look like this week, middle school girls. There's going to be somebody, some friend having a hard day this week. You may be super annoyed with that person, but their feelings are really real. And you see they just need somebody to say, it's going to be okay. Could you be that person this week to respond and, you know, make them feel seen and heard? Okay. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. My boys over here. Middle school boys. What are we thinking? Camden, you're high school boy. It can apply. Okay. We got this friend being picked on. Bert, do you ever have a friend picked on? No. Oh, that's good. You have such nice friends. If you see a friend being picked on, it's maybe a little bit hard sometimes, but uh, could you maybe stick up for the person? Yeah. You know how sticking up can sometimes look? You don't have to be mean and ugly, but you can make a joke and say, hey, pick on somebody your own size. Oh, okay, but don't pick on me. Okay, got it always their own size. Oh, okay. So maybe this week you're going to look for somebody who needs somebody to stick up for them. Can you do that? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay. So we all have our jobs this week. We're going to look for God working in really special ways, but you have to listen to his word to be able to respond to it. Are we ready to respond? Yes. Okay. Will you pray with me? Okay. Dear God, Dear God. help me hear your voice. Hear your words. See opportunities. And respond with yes. Amen. Hey, friends, if anybody has noisy offering, do you want to come see me today? Do we have any noisy offering?
Let us pray. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word, and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's epistle reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 26 through 28. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning comes from Acts 2, verses 37 through 47. Listen to the story that happens right after Pentecost, right after hearing a sermon about who Jesus is. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. 
So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, o Christ. Okay, I want to test some of your reflexes this morning. These are not rhetorical, and I love your participation. Are you ready? Many musicians on their Texas tour dates try a certain call and response. The stars at night are big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. Sweet Caroline. Bum, bum, bum. You say tomato. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. You ready? The eyes of Texas are upon you. <laughs> Gotta get you Aggies in there somewhere. Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Look at you guys. You guys are really good. How long did it take you guys to come up with those responses? E even if it's hissing at the Longhorns. <laughs> did you almost do it without thinking? Was it almost instinctual, like you couldn't help but respond? Today, we're thinking about responding to the Word. And not just any words, like Ghostbusters, but the Word of God. This is the third part of our series on the different parts of Presbyterian worship. We have been gathered in and united as one body, being assured of our forgiveness. We have encountered the word written, and now the word proclaimed, and hopefully the word incarnate. Now what? What do we do once we have learned about Jesus? What do we do after we hear a word that shifts something in our hearts or minds or bodies? The earliest brand new Christians asked the same question in our reading from Acts of the Apostles today. They were terribly upset after learning that they were passive participants in the crucifixion of Jesus, of God's only begotten Son. And so they asked in a little bit of despair, now what do we do? Peter's initial response was shaped around two imperatives, to repent and to be baptized. To repent is to change direction, to turn around. He told them to look beyond the crucifixion and to the resurrection, to change their hearts and minds about who Jesus was, is, and will be. Scottish Presbyterian theologian William Barclay looked at this notion of repentance both from the past and the future. He wrote, When repentance comes, something happens to the past. God's forgiveness. It puts us right with God. When repentance comes, something happens for the future gift of the Holy Spirit to win battles we never thought to win. So in repentance, God is doing something to the past, present, and future. Or to put it another way, those with changed hearts and changed minds now demand changed actions. 
Peter remixed the Jewish notion of baptism into a Christian symbol of a changed life and entering into community, an entry point into a life full of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then to see what this changed, repentant, baptized life together looks like, Luke in Acts went on to describe the church. It's learning, praying, sharing, and worshiping. It's value of togetherness and joy and goodness and reverence and food. It's very possible that Luke was slightly romanticizing the recent past, as we all tend to do. But there's no doubt that those actions and values continue to shape God's church today as a response to the word incarnate, word written, and word proclaimed. Now, it's important when we talk about the response to the word of God that this is not me saying the right words to motivate you. This is not about you being enthralled by every sermon I've ever preached. Instead, this is about what God is doing through the Word. In the Acts passage, when 3,000 people wanted to be baptized after hearing a pretty good sermon, no one wrote, and that's because Peter was the best preacher ever. No, instead they recognized that day by day, it was the Lord who added to their numbers. So it's important to say that any response to the word of God is also an act of God. Any response to the word comes wrapped up in the Holy Spirit. Now different scriptures and sermons evoke different responses. For example, in the season of Lent, the word often invites us toward introspective responses on, about our relationships with Jesus. At Pentecost, the word might challenge us to respond by rethinking our community, who's in and who's not here yet. At Advent, the word might take us back to the beginning to wonder in awe at the God who became incarnate. In stewardship season... The word will hopefully inspire you to pledge your gifts. The word of God can comfort the afflicted and it can afflict the comfortable. It can reassure and it can challenge. It can hold up a mirror to our own lives. It can light fires and it can cool parched souls. But we don't have to wait until we leave worship to start responding to God's word. In response to the word written and proclaim, we sing a hymn of response, we affirm our beliefs, we pray together, we give, and we participate in the sacraments of baptism and communion. Now we'll come back to the sacraments in a couple weeks, and we've already covered the essential act of music in worship. So I'll draw your attention to a couple other items in the bulletin if you want to pull it out and look along. If you noticed, after the word section, after the interpretation, we have the hymn of response, and then we see the affirmation of faith. This is the congregation's chance, y'all, to stand up and say what you believe. And I'm not talking about what you believe about the Longhorns and Archie Manning. It is... Instead, kind of like our pledge of allegiance to God. It's an affirmation for the first time or a reaffirmation of our beliefs about God, Jesus, the Spirit, the church, the world. Often the affirmations come from our PCUSA Book of Confessions, which contain 12 different creeds that span three continents and almost 2,000 years. It includes ecumenical ancient confessions like the Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed, as well as some unique to Presbyterianism like the Brief Statement of Faith. Other resources include Presbyterian catechisms, a question and answer teaching tool, or simply scripture verses. Once we have proclaimed our beliefs together, we then move into a time of communal prayer. And you'll notice in just a few minutes that I pray from the communion table because it is a reminder of our community that cannot be contained by these four walls. 
The PCUSA directory for worship echoes our scriptures from Romans this morning as they describe this particular response. In response to the word, we pray for the world God so loves, joining Christ's own ministry of intercession and the sighs of the Spirit too deep for words. These prayers are not the work of a single leader, but an act of the whole congregation as Christ's royal priesthood. And we move from prayers to the offering, one of the most tangible responses to the word of God. As a sign of our commitment to God, we return a portion of all that we have received. In our current chapter of life together, many of those financial gifts happen online, and we're very grateful for those. We also recognize that there are lots of ways to give, including time and talents and prayer that are responses to the word as well. So there are blue bookmarks in each pew to recognize those gifts, if you see the blue bookmarks near you. If you give online or if you volunteered for the church or you've had active prayers this week, you're welcome to put those blue bookmarks in the offering plate in addition to your beautiful, lovely checks and cash. Our younger members take up their noisy offering, and all of those offerings together are presented to the table as a sign that all these gifts belong to God. We conclude the offering with a sung doxology and a prayer of dedication. If you've been part of a Presbyterian church for a while, many of those responses may feel familiar to sing to affirm, to pray, to give. At my church in Topeka, one time we were getting fire sprinklers installed in the sanctuary, and so we were worshiping in Fellowship Hall, like we did a couple years ago. In order to ensure everyone could see the screen, we remained seated during hymns and other parts of worship. It was different, but we could all manage it for only a few weeks. Everything was going well, until the chords of Old Hundredth sung out. And then, well, they just couldn't help themselves. As one body, they stood up to sing the doxology, praise God from whom all blessings flow. There was no convincing them that they couldn't respond this way, that they could, in fact, sit and sing this song. The response to the word of God moved them out of their chairs Literally. And that is how the Word of God should move, change, shake us up as well in big and little ways. Every week we should come to worship wondering, how is God going to convict me this morning? What will my spiritual response, financial response, heart-changing, repentant response to the Word of God be? the Word incarnate in Jesus Christ, the written Word of the Holy Bible, and the Word proclaimed in the pulpit? Is it time to admit to yourself that you need forgiveness or that you need to offer forgiveness? Is it time to let go of bitterness or to grab on to joy? Is it time to admit to yourself and to God that you have strayed from the path that God intended? Our response to the Word, wherever we are in life or our faith journey, is to commit ourselves anew to the path of Jesus Christ, internally and externally, by our inward thoughts and prayers, and by our voices and actions. In the face of Jesus' life, crucifixion, and resurrection, in the face of God's amazing grace, now, what do we do? Once we know our part, once we know the truth that it should have been us on the cross and not Jesus, how can we feel anything but a deep desire to spend the rest of our lives turning it around? In his commentary on this passage from Acts, Yale Divinity School professor and theologian Dr. Willie James Jennings sees the bigger picture that comes with offering our lives in response to the word. He writes, 
What is far more dangerous than any plan of shared wealth is a God who dares impose on us divine love. Such love will not play fair. In the moment we think something is ours or our people's, that same God will demand we sell it, give it away, or offer more of it in order to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, or shelter the homeless, using it to create the bonds of shared life. This will be the new direction born of this moment. The opportunity for this new direction of this moment happens each and every Sunday. God dares impose on us divine love, drawing us into love for God and love for our neighbors. We may forget or wander away, but in worship, we are redirected to the true response to the word, to the love that came down from heaven to offer our whole lives in praise and glory to God. May this be our response now and forevermore. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able and sing our hymn of response, number 761. join me in an affirmation of faith. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, Empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. Please be seated. Join with me in prayer. 
Void by your living waters, O God, we are at peace in seas of stress and success. Detoured on those walkways leading to your joy, we find our way out of mazes and deadlines in order to praise you. God, we lift up our prayers of the week for our prayer focus for WPC session as they work and discern and lead our congregation. For our Westminster Seminary student, Callan Kennedy, as they pursue their studies at Louisville Seminary, continue to bless them in their response to the word. For our prayer church of the week, for Westminster Presbyterian Church in Fort Worth, God, we ask that you continue to nurture them through this interim period that the right leader will be led to them. And for our living waters for the world prayer focus, for our partners at Grace Presbyterian and Temple, Texas, as we prepare a new installation in 2025. And we celebrate that Jennifer Del Angel passed her LCSW exam and is now a licensed clinical social worker. Oh God, we are nourished at your picnic in that garden of grace. Our shredded souls are anointed by your healing. You slow us down just enough as we try to escape the very lives we think we want so goodness and mercy can catch up with us and carry us into your heart. We pray for those who need extra healing and your presence this week, O God, for Harry Staley, Barbara Kennedy, Les Brooks, Penelope Nelson, Marjorie McCowan, Elizabeth and Winston Barney, Jakey Spinks, Ed and Linda Frazee, Chad Bridges, Lane and Ann Cook, Kathy Anderson, Stephanie West's friend David, Deborah Nelson's cousin Jack and friend Vicki, Ruth Jeweler's son John, Marjorie McCowan's son-in-law Brian, Sandra James's friend Jeremy and Eileen, Maggie Del Angel's brother Bernie, Aaron O'Connor's uncle Michael, Janet Kovach's friend David, David Farrell's sister Sally, Jimmy and Wileen George's relative Karen, Linda Wilson's friend Donna, Harry Staley's sister Kate, Catherine Fritz's friends Jason and Pam, Charles Bridges' sister-in-law Linda, Jim and Susan Johnson's neighbors Val and Alla and their family and all of those with loved ones in Ukraine, Verlene Pike's brother Bill and sister-in-law Marion. God and community, holy and one, May you always be with us on our journey as we continue to pray as Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. After hearing about the love of Jesus Christ, what else could we do but respond with an offering of our own lives? As a symbol of our commitment to God, let us now bring our tithes and offerings to God's table.
Let us pray. May we imitate your generosity, gracious God, as we offer these gifts to you. May we model your justice as we seek to bring hope to the broken all around us. May we share the gift of your love with all who are alone and hurting and simply looking for grace in their lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're able, for our final hymn, number 742, We Will Walk With God. You may have noticed our, uh, our youth in some Westminster churches today. They are going to be helping us move some tables onto a U-Haul for the library book sale. If you feel like that is something you can help with, please join us in Fellowship Hall because many hands will make light work. Brooklyn says please. And now as you go out into the world, hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted, help the suffering, and tend to the sick. Honor all people, loving and serving and rejoicing and responding to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.